Well, hello folks. Welcome to another video from EGIS Associates. We're once again here at the North Carolina GIS Conference in Winston-Salem. And we're here in the Dude Solutions booth and we're going to be talking a little bit about asset management and how GIS plays a, a key role in that and then some of the different factors that are really driving the need to, to focus and really get well, like down and dirty with asset management, <laughs> and, and we, we really do with some of these assets get uh, in there. I, I've had the fun of doing physical sewer inspection. Um, don't know if anybody's had that joy, but uh, back before the days of OSHA, I literally had to climb down into like 30 foot deep manholes to inspect them and there was no like gas freeing them or anything it was just uh, pop, pop, <laughs> pop it up and yeah get down in there so what um, so let's kind of get into to this and and talk um, first let's introduce yourself so yeah. um, my name is Price Carter I'm an account executive for Dude Solutions I deal mostly in the southeast for the governments um, special service districts municipalities um, and that's kind of my sweet spot Okay. Yeah, my name is Anna Ross, and I'm a senior GIS specialist at Dude Solutions. Okay, yeah. great. So, you know, uh, it, asset management really has become, um, well, a, a buzzword really out there in the local government yeah. industry, utility industry, because of well, one, the expense of all of these things that we put in the ground. We, we you know, they spend tens of millions of dollars to put you know water systems gas systems storm water and all that in the ground and and track them and we see so many other things coming about uh, is my dad who used to be a, a city engineer mm -hmm. called some of them unfunded mandates right that, that we now have things like GASB 34 for those that don't know what that is it's government governmental accounting standards board rule 34 mm -hmm. that changed how governments are supposed to financially track their assets that you're supposed to now value and depreciate your stormwater system your streets your sidewalks just like you do the desks the cars and the computers exactly right um, and then we have things like with uh, sanitary sewer CMOM right so we got to look at where our, our manholes are make sure they're not surcharging so we're being environmentally conscious of where that nasty stuff is yeah. going exactly. right we don't want it in our drinking water no. and, and, and so many other things so let's talk about what your clients are, are facing, what's really driving them to implement these asset management solutions, and then the challenges that they're facing. So uh, I'd, I'd love to start. Um, you hit the nail on the head there with a lot of the conversations that I have. Um, there are, uh, MS4 has become a big deal. Um, you talk about unfunded mandates. Uh, MS4 and stormwater regulations that have been put in effect are that, they're unfunded mandates. Um, everybody, they have a system that's worked a certain way for the past however many years. A lot of the time you're dealing with uh, what we like to call in the industry a silver tsunami in public works and things along those lines. So a lot of these cities and smaller municipalities, they've had somebody that's been there for 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. That's awesome. They know it like the back of their hand. But when there's the new generation coming into that, that information, if it's not captured, that's going to leave with them and then for the, the people that have been there for 30 years when they retire they don't want to answer phones asking where the utilities are <laughs> where the work has gone on this so it's really the transfer of knowledge um, unfunded mandates and really just having tools to get what they need um, budgets aren't increasing people are being asked to do more with less and having the tools to say hey I need somebody else well why do you need somebody tracking that showing where that work was done, how much was done, and having kind of a sense mm -hmm. of why, how much, what have you have done, adding that transparency into day-to-day -day operations gives um, a lot of our partners the tools to go and request those things, whether it be new manpower, new equipment, and those are really the three biggest things that I've seen dealing mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the smaller municipalities. Okay. Yeah, I, I actually had a client I'd worked with uh, a while ago that had a natural gas system and it covered like six counties in, in Georgia. Now that those counties are a lot smaller because we have a stupid number, but, um, and they had this one guy, he did, he knew everything about this. He knew where all the regulators were, where all the valves were, where all the lines were. And you know, we were after them to, you need to map this. You need to, to transfer this because you know, he's not going to be here forever. Right. And it did. I mean, literally one weekend he was out and I don't remember what happened. I don't know if he had a heart attack or got hit by a car or whatever, but he was gone. Yeah. And all of that knowledge was gone with him. Right. And so they didn't know where their system was. And when we went to go have to map it at that point, 
they literally took me to a construction trailer in the public works yard and said, well, here's all we know. And it was literally floor to ceiling as built. It went back to the time the system was originally put in the ground. Yep. And the amount of effort it takes to map that yeah. is, well, as y'all know, is astronomical. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Right. It certainly cost a whole lot more than if we could have done it while he was there exactly. and just kind of sat there and told us, oh, this is here. Now, it might not have been super spatially accurate and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff, but certainly a whole lot better than starting from scratch like they did. Exactly. So from a technology standpoint, mm -hmm. um, what do you see as things that are driving this, helping it to come about, and maybe even hindering it to some extent. Yeah, for the collection of GIS data or? For, for any, collection okay. of it, storage of it, yeah. then the actual analysis and use of it. Yeah, so I think, do you want me to take that? No, that's fine. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, so I think that one thing where you kind of talked about recent, just a minute ago was kind of getting people accustomed to taking that data and knowledge that one person has and getting them to actually mm -hmm. sit down and map it because even if you know they're looking at the as builds or one person contains all that data you've got to really encourage people to make the change to put that into a system to mm -hmm. map it all so that that knowledge can not only be shared with the people that they're working with day to day but that it can be shared throughout departments mm -hmm. um, so just encouraging that use um, can sometimes be difficult so um, yeah, we're working on that right now with, with some cities for mm -hmm. sure. Um, but, you know, once you have that data out there, um, also maintaining it can sometimes be a source of, um, I don't want to say trouble, but it can it can take some time to um, get clients used to mm -hmm. working on that data and maintaining it. So, yeah. One of the, I guess, issues that I've had mm -hmm. working with some of my clients is trying mm -hmm. to explain to them you know why they need certain tools you yes. know so when you tell them they, they need to go out and collect data for yep. example mm -hmm. and they say oh great I'll, I'll go out with my iphone yeah. and you're like no you you, <laughs> you can't you've got to have some how much is that a challenge or how do you address trying to educate them on the fact that not all collection units yeah, are equal. How, how do you how do y'all go about doing that? Yeah, so we actually frequently have a lot of clients ask us when they're just getting started, what should I use to get out in the field to start, you know, mapping certain certain utilities and features mm -hmm. that they have. Um, one really awesome thing about our software is you can collect GPS points using your cell phone or your tablet mm -hmm. to start collecting that data. Mm -hmm. um, so it just depends on how accurate they need, what exactly they're trying to capture. Um, so we always, we can point them in different ways towards Tremble or Bad Elf or some of the mm -hmm. other um, sources that we pointed people towards, but you can always use our solutions as well to capture that data. But just having the conversation with them of what do you want to capture and making sure each of those choices are accurate mm -hmm. enough for what they need. Mm -hmm. So, But you talked about the fact that you talk or work a lot with like city managers, county managers, all that. How do you explain to the layman the differences because they do they think their cell phone gets them from point a to point b using google maps how do you explain to them the differences in a way that they understand that it is worth paying the extra five ten thousand whatever dollars to purchase a trimble or bad elf or whatever unit to get that more accurate level of collection it, it really starts in what they're trying to achieve uh, each each city or municipality is going to have different goals and objectives mm -hmm. um Overall, everybody seems to be in the same boat, but mm -hmm. everybody's kind of in different cabins. They're going to have higher priorities. And just kind of talking on what their priorities are, how they're asking for maybe a higher funding for a certain activity, mm -hmm. what their goals are and how they're going to get there. And once you kind of talk through point A to point B to point Z, through that conversation and just kind of slowing it down a little bit, saying, hey, do you know where this is? Well, no, not really. Well, what if you had something that could? Oh, you mean like GIS? Actually, exactly like GIS. <laughs> um, you'll have that information forever. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't matter kind of who you want to use to leverage that information, but just having that long-term planning and kind of opening their eyes up. I know there's issues now, but if you don't look to the 5, 10, 30 years, mm -hmm. then those issues are just going to keep compounding, and you're mm -hmm. not going to tackle the larger objectives. So, you know, looking at kind of the big picture that you know we've had asset management around for a while and some of it may have been done in spreadsheets some of them it may have been clipboards some of it whiteboards. may have whiteboards yeah. may have been done 
what do you see is the growing advantages of more enterprise-based solutions out there where it's not just the gas department or public works or roads or whoever yeah what, what, do, you, what do you see as those? yeah the enterprise is definitely what I see um, the industry going the the biggest thing is when we get to work in asset management that term is pretty broad when mm -hmm. you go there's a lot of people that do work in asset management but um, when it gets down to it how are you using all the tools possible? Um, if you do have that GIS, um, most places have some sort of GIS, whether it be a little bit of it mapped out, but you have that information, that's step one. Step two is how are you gonna use that information and leverage that to help be more efficient, um, have operations mm -hmm. more efficient, spend your money properly, be able to fight for what you really think is needed for the city. Mm -hmm. So with that too, what are the technical challenges you've seen trying to move from the clipboard and the Excel spread into a more enterprise solution in some of the, especially the small uh, entities, the small cities, the small counties, even small utility authorities. Yeah, I think from the GIS side of things, it's finding someone in those smaller, um, you know, communities to find someone to actually do the, the work behind it. So when you're going from paper and whatnot to try and move everyone into the software, especially GIS mm -hmm. side of things, is, is getting someone to commit to the time that it takes to make that transition mm -hmm. um, and really believe mm -hmm. in it and that it's going to, you know, make it better for everyone that's going to be working on mm -hmm. it. So, And I did have a little bit to add to that as well. Um, when you talk about having enterprise software, really what that comes down to is having software that can do multiple facets, everything that the municipality needs. Um, but how are they speaking together? Yep. In the past, it was people were good at doing one thing, and everybody's kind of evolving to getting to that point where they're getting good at just about everything in the window. But a lot of the times, companies don't like to play nice. Let's put yep. it that way. So um, the idea is being able to track things like work and asset, tie that to GIS, be able to tie that to your energy program, mm -hmm. tie that to your facility condition assessments, just everything that you have, just making that data communicate with each other and be more efficient. Well, I mean, nothing's worse than being a citizen and, and driving through your area and seeing that the road department's come out and done this nice, pretty road paving project, put in new sidewalks, and then two weeks later, the water department's out there cutting it all up again. <laughs> You know, yeah. and, and just seeing that makes you go, what, are, are, are these people idiots? I mean, yeah. why didn't they communicate? Why didn't they do that before they did this nice road project? And mm -hmm. and so, yeah, I think that is exactly kind of key on the point, that communication part yes. that that enterprise brings mm -hmm. uh, to, to make sure that we're not doing things multiple times right. and we're doing things in logical ways that make sense yeah. and, and whatnot. So uh, I think that's absolutely true. Well, where do you see, or how are drones? That's a big topic now. We see a lot of, of municipalities trying to deploy drones, UAVs, UA, whatever we're supposed to call them nowadays. How do y'all see that fitting into this asset management space? That's a good question. Yeah. Um, on the GIS side, just from my experience, I, I don't get as dirty on the GIS. <laughs> Talk more about um, kind of what that can be used to help mm -hmm. you get the goals you achieve. But, being able to get up there, not I mean, it, it sounds a little dumb, but not having to rent a helicopter, not having to go up in a plane and pay that large amount of money, and the fact that it's become a economical and really reasonably priced way to get up there and get an accurate view of what is down there at the moment from a bird's eye view. So I think that's been a big game changer from just the cost mm -hmm. cost side. Yeah. Anything to add to that? Yeah, and you don't have to schedule time for like when you're running a hot helicopter or any kind of like getting up there you can basically fly when you need to fly and get the information you need mm -hmm. to get right away so yeah I've seen a lot especially when you're trying to do rooftop inventories yep. um, you know, I, I know that uh, I think they use that in Disney for Disney World down there to get like all where all the air conditioning units are and you know really what's on the top of all of those buildings certainly a lot easier than sending one person up every time <laughs> and you brought up it kind of brought some this thought into my head that my parents live at the beach and they had to actually evacuate this season for the hurricane season for a little while. Um, they came back to the house. Luckily, there was no major damage, but during the insurance process, there was some roof issues, but my father-in-law has a drone down the road and they were able to go up, take a video of the roof in its current state that was time stamped and they use that in the insurance process. So that, that's a little off, off tier, but it's a, uh, it's, really cool that that's even an option for even residential household owners. 
So with, with all of this stuff in mind, what do you see as the, the next greatest thing in asset management? Where, where's the trends heading us from a use case, from a technology perspective, from a software development perspective? I mean, how, and I guess how is that going to impact your product line? Um, it, it's impacted our product line the last two years in particular. We've had quite a few. We have about 100 people that work on development downstairs. Um, we've had many acquisitions over the past few years. But really just having that full scope and being able to meet um, our partners' needs. Um, if they want something done from a technology standpoint, it's moving towards um, cloud-based services because those are, in my opinion, catching up to where they can be as good or better and more convenient access it from anywhere um, in the office and then if you want the guys and girls in the field to have something there's a mobile app where the <laughs> six buttons that they need to hit they're lined up easily and that information's held for them yeah Anything? and i know our solutions right now we've we've integrated arc online to work mm -hmm. with our software so as soon as the new data has been edited um, on the GIS professional side it can be automatically uploaded and it's there for the guys in the field so so I think that's a great point. One of the things I've seen and encountered as people are moving into enterprise, especially in the small arena, yeah. is that they don't have the technical staff mm -hmm. to really manage and maintain those servers and, and really just don't know how to configure them properly. Mm -hmm. Right. So being able to rely on a cloud solution yeah. like we have with Mobile 311 uh, is, a, is a perfect fit for them, especially if they're just getting started. Right. It takes that, that worry off, removes a cost, to them and and then does make it readily accessible uh, and especially you know I was talking earlier with uh, Bradshaw Consulting mm -hmm. and you know one of the concerns you know we've had a lot of bad weather right, right? Yes. we've had hurricanes a lot of flooding and then you go to the west coast they've had you know <laughs> the opposite of flooding <laughs> droughts which have led to fires um, so what happens when that data is not available because the power is off to your your servers or the servers underwater or so again i think that cloud solution is, is a great opportunity to that so well i think it's great guys do y'all have anything else you, you can think of that i haven't um no i, I want to just add that last that you mentioned that a lot of the times we do work with people that are going from a manual process or maybe they had another process that just didn't work for them <laughs> um what I like to say what sets us apart, and I know it is, is the people at Dude Solutions. If um, we're with you through it, we've done this over 12,000 times. Uh, you call us during the week, we pick up within three rings, um, unlimited support. So really, a big thing there is you have the work and asset systems along those lines, but these people getting into it for the first time in smaller communities that couldn't afford an IT manager or things along those lines, or anybody in GIS in a full-time role, they're able to use the resources they have combined with ours to get the goals that they want. Yeah. Great. Exactly. Anything else? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, Price covered it. <laughs> price got good, good. Glad they did. So, so there you have it, guys. We've, we've covered a lot about asset management, why you want to do it, and the things it can help you do. Uh, if you have any other questions, I'll provide a link to Dude Solutions, their website, and uh, maybe an email address. So if you want to find out more about what they bring to the table, if you're just getting started in this, you know, make sure to reach out to them. I can say I've worked with them, uh, with a couple of my clients. They're great folks, and everything you said about their support, dead on. So with that, we'll see you all in the next video. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Tripp. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>